Hello, my name is Shell and I'm one of the ministers with Circle Sanctuary and today we're going to talk about brooms. Now those of you who have been in a workshop with me before know that I love words and even more importantly I love the definition of words and looking at what the words we're using actually mean. So my favorite place to check in for this is Merriam-Webster. So I consulted with them and they told me that the definition of a broom is a bundle of firm, stiff twigs or fibers bound together, sometimes attached to a long handle used for sweeping. So a bundle of firm twigs or fibers bound together. Now, right off the bat, I love that. So just think about it, a collection of tiny individual twigs. So like right here, I have one individual twig that came off of a broom. And so it just makes me think of each of us in our community and how we as individuals sometimes feel like we can't get stuff done. But when we band together and we become a large group, then we can get the big jobs done. When we all be, uh, put ourselves together, then it's a whole different story as it relates to what we can actually get done. The origin of attaching twigs to a long stick with a handle dates back to ancient times as they were originally used to sweep around fires to get rid of the ashes and embers in an attempt to keep cooking and the simple act of staying warm as a safe activity. And so this of course goes way back when we were outdoors all the time and at the point then that civilization moved indoors and started having buildings and dwellings, then when they moved in, they brought all of the tools they'd been using outside with them. So it's safe to say that brooms are maybe one of the very first cleaning tools that were ever invented. And the other thing is they were just made from whatever natural organic material they had available to them. So quite simply, it was just tree branches and some brush. And I love this idea of folks, again, being just practical, figuring out what their needs were, looking around them and seeing what resources they had available, and then just coming up with something that worked for them. Now I have here uh, a broom that I'm gonna try to show you in a way that makes some sense. And I actually was lucky enough to get this broom when I was in Guinea, Africa earlier. Uh, and I was, uh, kind of reconnected with my love of brooms when I was in Guinea. I don't know if you know much about Guinea, but it's a pretty poor country and they don't have a lot of stuff. And so again, they're just looking around for what materials they have available and doing what makes the most sense for them. And so this little hand broom, I, I think that it kind of looks like it's pine needles and it's just really simply tied together with this little elastic strap and then wrapped up with some a strip of traditional African fabric to give it a little bit of decoration and this and these hand brooms I didn't see a lot of brooms over there that were actually on sticks most of the work they did were with these little hand brooms so I when I got home I was sharing with my friends that they don't need yoga over there because they just bend over at the waist and use these little hand brooms to sweep sweep up a, ma a huge areas, entire houses and huts and the areas outside where they're cooking and they do all of that with hand brooms. So I was really happy to be able to bring this broom back and I'm pretty attached to it. Do you have a favorite broom that you really like? One that you're attached to or has some kind of sacred or significant purpose for you? If you do, post a picture of it down below and share with us the story of why it's so special for you. Now I've been talking and teaching about the magical mysteries of what we call mundane work for quite some time now. And of course the broom is really a central part of that sacred work the work that we do to clean the temples which are the dwellings we live in. But one of the things I haven't always thought about is the natural materials that brooms can be made out of and how that can solidify our connections to the earth. Not all of us are lucky enough to live out in the woods or to have access to 
uh, the outdoors all the time, uh, a lot of the urban dwellers kind of have to get creative in the ways that they're able to connect with nature. And so for me, and preparing for this workshop, I was really thinking about how if you have a broom that's made out of natural material, even if you live in a very urban setting, being able to touch and hold the wood of that broom, having the natural fibers be what you use to sweep things away, is another way that you can connect with nature and, and the materials that Mother Earth makes and gives us. The other thing that I was thinking about is the very rhythmic motion of sweeping, 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 and that that back and forth motion can be very meditative and ritualistic if we want it to be. Now let's be honest. I talk about the magical mysteries of mundane work because in truth, I really don't like housework. So I work really hard to figure out how I can make those tasks sacred to me and make them more meaningful. And so when we are sweeping, we can, if we choose to, make this more of a ritualistic kind of activity. So to help illustrate this point on how we can make sweeping meditative and kind of this rhythmic moving kind of thing, I wrote this little chant that you can use while you're sweeping, if you'd like. And I want you to think in terms of this chant with that constant sweeping motion and singing this as we're sweeping back and forth. And so here goes. Broom, broom, sake sacred broom glides across my kitchen here there and everywhere the cleaning is bewitching broom broom sacred broom glides across my kitchen here there and everywhere the cleaning is bewitching broom broom sacred broom glides across my kitchen here, there, and everywhere, the cleaning is bewitching. So, I just really need to share with you right now on this little live stream thing that while I was singing that in my head, each and every one of you were dancing a little waltz throughout your kitchen while you were sweeping. So even if you weren't doing that, I just want you to know, in my mind, that's what you were doing the whole time we were singing that chant together. As we welcome in spring, it's also a great time to focus on spring cleaning. And it dawned on me this year that one of the really important parts of spring cleaning and that whole act that we go through to kind of literally and spiritually cleanse our, our dwellings and ourselves is the act of also cleaning and cleansing our broom. So think about all of the work that they put in every week, every day, all of the times that you're using your broom. And this can be a really important thing for us to focus on and something that's kind of easy for us to overlook and forget. Now, many of us have rituals and traditions that we like to use with our brooms that have to do with cleaning and cleansing. An example being for me personally, every time I move to a new place, I get a new broom. Now, I don't mean my ritual or my sacred brooms or the ones that I'm really attached to. I'm talking about that workhorse, the one that you have that does all the dirty work, that, you know, sweeps inside, outside, whatever it is. That broom, I don't take that to my new place. I always get a new one. And so I think old house, old broom, old energy, new place to live, new broom, new energy. So for me, that's one of the traditions I've put in place is getting a new broom every time I move to a new place. How about you? What are some of your personal traditions or magical work that you do to cleanse and cleanse your brooms? So go ahead and post down below any things that you do special on a regular basis to update and cleanse your brooms. As a part of our spring cleaning and broom cleansing, if you would like to, you can join in with me now on this broom blessing. So if you're able, hold your broom, or if you're not able to, it's okay. Just picture it in your mind's eye and think of the space that that broom works in. 
Think of all the things that your broom does to cleanse and clean your house, your areas, the places where you live, all of the places you use your broom, and appreciate all of the work that it's done for you and with you over this past year. Sweeping away all that you don't want in your house, helping you keep up your living areas and spaces, and energetically brushing away all of the negativity. Now, if you happen to be outdoors with your broom, brush the bristles against a tree or some other object to be able to get all of the dust and debris or any of the things that are caught up in your broom. Another thing that you can do right now or later today, well, you can't do it right now because I'm asking you to hold on to your broom, but later today, one of the things you can do is actually put your broom outside if it's sunny where you are, like it is for me here today, put your broom outside in the direct sun. So not only does this energize it, but it's a really great way to cleanse and disinfect the broom. And it also is great for smells, not that your broom usually smells, but I use this trick all the time when I find treasures from a thrift store that I want to cleanse and kind of uh, uh, deal with any potential smells that might be there, I hang them outside in the sun and snap. Just totally takes care of it. Now the one thing that you have to remember is about midday you need to go outside and flip it because you were sunning it on one side and then you need to flip it around and sun it on the other so that it gets cleansed and cleaned on both sides. Now, as you're holding your broom, if you are, feel the material that it's made of. Feel how it fits in your hands and give honor and thanks to the tool that you use more than you probably even think about and honor the work that it allows you to accomplish. Now, today for our community bloom, bleh, blooms, it is spring, isn't it? So today, for our broom blessing, in lieu of a traditional four directional blessing, I thought I would share with you a couple poems that I found. For me, they really speak to the magical yet practical work that brooms play in our lives. Now the first one is a poem that was written by Emily Dickinson, written in a time before gender roles and descriptions were expanded in the way that we have them today. But I think each of us can see ourselves in the magic of this poem. She sweeps with many colored brooms and leaves the shreds behind. Oh, housewife in the evening west, come back and dust the pond. You dropped a purple Traveling in, you dropped an amber thread, and now you've littered all the east with duds of emeralds. And still she plies her spotted brooms, and still the aprons fly, till brooms fade softly into stars, and then I come away. Another poem that I wanted to share with you today is written by Alice Walker, and she calls it Desire, but I like to call it the big old fat broom poem. My desire is always the same. Wherever life deposits me, I want to stick my toe and soon my whole body into the water. I want to shake out a fat broom and spread weep leaves and brushed blossoms and dead insects and dust. I want to grow something. It seems impossible that desire can sometimes transform into depression, but this has happened, and that's how I've survived. How the hole I carefully tended in the garden of my heart grew a heart to fill it. So as you embrace that big fat broom of yours, own it and honor it as a magical and essential tool that you breathe life into and it brings blessings to you and the work that you do. Blessed be. Thank you all so much for joining me today while we chatted a little bit about brooms. 
when we had originally scheduled the event on land, we were going to make brooms, and that was really not something that I was going to be able to transfer very well to a Facebook Live session. But hopefully you found something interesting today and you were able to connect and think about your broom in a little bit of a different way. So up next in the schedule, starting at 11.15, we have the fabulous Florence, who's going to be talking to us about the magic of air and breath. So get up, walk around, rest your eyes, and we'll see you back here at 11.15. Thanks again for touching base with me, and I'll see you all later. Bye!